All right, good evening. Good evening. Good to see everybody tonight. Uh, thank you for being here. Looking forward to Ricky's presentation tonight. I know that everybody keeps in mind throughout the year the ministry in Honduras that uh, is ongoing. Uh, if not, please do. Uh, but it's always great to hear uh, updates from from our our folks who stay on top of it and know uh, uh, know what we need to know or are able to, to share with us what uh, what God is doing. And uh, we're thankful for Ricky being with us tonight. Thankful for all those who have gone and participated and those who continue to support the work there. Thank you. Thankful for uh, William and Jacqueline and uh, the, our, uh, our, our family in Honduras. But uh, thank you for being with us tonight. We're going to start with a word of prayer, and then Ben is going to lead us in uh, some songs uh, before we turn it over to Ricky. We are thankful nobody we know of is in the hospital this morning. You might pick up a bulletin if you hadn't already or access that online to see uh, updated prayer requests. A couple of things that we mentioned this morning, our sympathy to the family of Miss Claddie Robertson, sister of Dan Mills. Her funeral services uh, were conducted yesterday uh, at Higgins Funeral Home um, and the day before in Birmingham where, where she lived. Congratulations extended to Eric and Christina Grobner on the birth of their daughter, Amelia Elise. Amelia Elise was born on Tuesday, weighed 7 pounds, 12 ounces. And of course, proud grandparents are Grant and Charlotte Bartelt, so we're tickled for them. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we are thankful to be able to gather this evening and, uh, Father, to, uh, to worship and to hear about what you are at work doing in Honduras and around the world. Father, we're thankful to be uh, just a small part of that. We pray your blessings on the work there. We pray your blessings on Ricky as he brings a message to us tonight. We pray your blessings on our worship as we uh, worship you in song. Father, we're thankful for the blessings you give us. We're thankful for life and health. We do pray for those who are not able to be with us because of health situations. We pray for healing. We pray for uh, strength and comfort. Father, bless those who are hurting. And, uh, and Father, uh, we pray that the exercises of this hour will be in an honor and a glory to you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Ben? Our first song this evening will be number nine. Number nine. Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer, worthy of glory, honor, and power, worthy of all our souls and Sing it anyway. <clears throat> 
Number 416. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. and the children's uh, ministry will release while we're singing this song. <clears throat> what a song of delight in that city so bright will be wrapped in deep heaven's fair dawn. How the ransom will raise happy songs in his praise when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, when never a sorrow will come, there'll be no, no place like home. When all of God's singers get home, having overcome sin, hallelujah, me, we'll be heard in that land for the Every heart will be light, and each face will be bright, when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, where never a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home. Thank you everyone for taking the opportunity to come out tonight. I appreciate you doing that. I know it's been a beautiful day. and Hopefully we can uh, pass along some information to you about the Honduras ministry. Uh, last year, last July, Joe Cummins the 4th and I went down. We were the only two going, so it makes a really good trip for the organizer when, when you got two going, but we had a really good trip and uh, included some slides from a little bit from last July because it's a little extending activity that took place after we left from down there. But uh, I'm going to try to update as, as, as right up to the moment as we can. I got home, well, I've been in about all afternoon, and I got home about 4 o'clock, and William messaged me a couple of pictures from the worship service in, in Valley of the Angels and Cantaranas today, and so they're in the slide this morning, so it's right up to the moment. Now, they're meeting at the same time we are. Uh, well, actually, they're close because they're an hour behind us, but <clears throat> there will be meeting in uh, Villa de San Francisco. 
uh, well, it, let's see, there, it's 5 o'clock their time, which is 6 our time, about the time we get out. They, they go a little bit longer than we do normally. They meet about 9 o'clock in Valley, and the Angels 9 to 9.30-ish, and uh, that goes for a couple of hours, and then they meet at 2 in Contaranas, and then at 5 in Villa de San Francisco, and William gets home about 8 to 8.30 at night every Sunday, so he has a full day. I want to go ahead and get started, and I'm hoping I know how to do this. If I go forward, I just push the up button. So, which one? Aha, good deal. I, I included this slide because William sent me this picture before we went down in July. Now, I hope you can see it well enough that uh, he says, I said, what are you doing, brother? And he said, well, I'm building a house. And, I, and can y'all see it at all? Okay, so he, he waves, and he's at the top of this thing waving at me, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't have been on top of it waving. So he sends me this, and, and the guy, there's a guy there's helping him by the name of Oscar, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Oscar here in a moment. So here's the frame. There's Oscar. There, our, Oscar is sharpening sticks, and this is the framing. Now, I want to show you the results. There's the house. Now, there's a little old lady who lives at the top of the mountain as you're or a hill next to where you go drop off into Contaranas. And Ray and Raina know exactly where I'm talking about. I did note, and I'll show you a slide in a moment, but uh, Joe and I walked up there. She didn't have a bed. She built, uh, William and Oscar framed this house up for her. It's mud blocks. And, and that's the little old lady on the front porch there with her, one of her daughters. I think she, she may have more than one. And this is the little old lady. And she didn't have a bed, so we built a bed frame for her, and we carried it up there when we were there in July. And so, thankfully, we had enough money left over that we could uh, help to get a, a mattress. But I don't know if you can see it or not, but in that wall that would be to our right, her left, you can see her handprints where she took mud and wiped on the wall and fixed and finished out the inside of that house. I thought I was going to die before I got up there to where it is. So I don't know how this little old lady makes it up and down through there every day, but she does. All right, here's Ray and Raina and Oscar, and I cannot remember that other brother's name. He's one of the four brothers that goes to the church there in Contaranas. I've got the mattress box brain right. Now, in this picture, I see the mattress in box springs, but I don't see Raina. Did you make it to the top? Oh, you did? <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, this bed frame, this late, did the bed frame work? Because I haven't heard. Okay, good deal. Thank you. It's good to have people on the ground. Uh, and so this is what looks like looked like last year when we got there in July. And our purpose last year was to make a couple of roofs or canopies for one for the teens to meet under in Contaranas, which is adjacent to what is called a classroom. That little building that you see in the center up a part of the photo is a classroom for the children. And so this roof is going to be for the teens. Now, they have teen training every Sunday afternoon. Uh, uh, I don't know what time. Uh, so they were, they were prepping that site and getting ready for that. And this is the framing that was going on with that, which we attached it onto the existing building was that, that was there. And then if you can see this, this is at night. This was a dedication service for that area, for that building. And there were people everywhere. And so this is where this is the, it's adjacent to the children's classroom. It's where the teens have uh, biblical training each Sunday. And so there were a crowd of folks there, as you can see, scattered throughout. They had a fire going. Uh, probably food was involved. Uh, and then they had a big circle of people out in the street. This is the main street uh, holding hands and praying, I'm assuming, is what's going on there. Uh, and this is the roof that we built in Villa de San Francisco. And it, it was, was going to be kind of the same thing, but it's a place for the church to meet on Sunday evenings. Even, you know, if it's, if it's not raining, it's great. They have two seasons. They don't have you know, summer, winter, fall, whatever. They have rainy and, and, and hot, dry. And so the, the only thing you got to kind of be aware of there is the rain. And when the rain does come, they got a shelter to get under there. 
or they can go into the classroom that's just right across the street from where this structure is built to where we built a house that's being used for Sunday school and, and for, uh, for church services now. And it's owned by, and I'll show you a picture of the people that own it. They actually have relatives in New Jersey. And when we were there in July, the lady uh, of this family there was that we had to get tested to get out of the country, which was, I would have paid to get a positive, I mean a negative test. So but we got out and this lady was getting her test at the same time we were to get, to get on the plane. Now last uh, March the 19th, it was Father's Day in Honduras. And this is his classroom that I was telling you about. And this is in Villa de San Francisco. And the gentleman in the middle holding the cake is the owner of the property. And he's a really great fellow. And these are some of the fathers that are involved in the congregation there. It's very strong. And it's getting stronger each and every time they meet. This is uh, worship in Valley of the Angels today, this morning. Uh, they are a little more sensitive to the six foot apart than they are anywhere else. And uh, you can see that they're scattered throughout. But this is the church building in the, uh, excuse me, in Valley of the Angels. And there was a pretty good crowd there this morning. And then this is the classroom that's in the front of the building. There's two classrooms, one on the right, one on the left. And then this is the, the church in Contaranas today. Uh, these pictures, the, this is right behind when William, <laughs> William built a, he and Oscar built a structure behind their house for the church to meet under. We were paying rent for a building, and William says, there's no use in paying rent. Let's just save the rent money for a couple of months and build a structure behind my, this house that he's renting, and then we can meet under it. So that's what we're doing. And the church is there. Uh, it meets there every Sunday and, and quite a few times through the week. And there's a lot of activity goes on. This is a picture of, uh, there's a young man up. I don't know exactly what he's doing there. And then William, this is another picture. The street is just right behind uh, <clears throat> William there. The, he, William's standing in the middle with the blue shirt on. There have been 23 baptisms since we were there in July. And so they have been busy. These are two of the girls that were baptized in Contaranas. The guy in the shirt there, the dark shirt, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about in a little bit. His name is Oscar David Rodas. And uh, he's become a very integral part of the congregation, the churches there, in, not only in Contaranas, but Villa also. Uh, we have people that do things that you we don't ever know about. But uh, I want to give a little props to Patsy Rogers. Patsy says, is there anything you guys need? And I said, yeah, we need baptismal garments. Well, about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, the night before we were leaving to go to Honduras last Ju July, typical Patsy, she shows up with baptismal garments. And so these are some of them that are there. And William and this lady, this is the, the baptistry there in, in uh, Contaranas. And yes, the water is very cold. Uh, especially at this time, well, especially during the rainy season. This is also, this is in Villa de San Francisco. Uh, there's a, about probably three quarters of a mile from where the congregation meets in Villa, there's a river. Uh, and I've been fortunate enough to be down there a couple of times to baptize people in that river. It's not real deep, uh, but this is Oscar there, and he's baptizing a, a young lady, I believe it is. Yes, in this picture. It's very shallow. In fact, last the, the last time the group went, I pulled my vehicle out into the stream and the guys washed it for me, so that was really nice. All right, now the ones, the ones that have been to Honduras many times, and Ray will remember this very much, on the road going from, from uh, Tegucigalpa to Valley of the Angels, there's a place called Bloque Strong, and you remember, Ray, we built this house upon, we got out of the truck, and I said, where are we going to build? And Carlos says, up there. And it was literally, uh, uh, J Jamie Rozier was with us. And I, I wish you could have seen his eyes when he thought, 
But anyway, so we like to die before we got up there because we got to go up this path to get up there. But this young lady here is the daughter of the lady that we built that house for. Her name was Suyapa, or is Suyapa. And there's a lot of Suyapas in Honduras, like Carlos's. But this young lady was baptized, and this is Ricardo Guerra. He works there in the church at the Valley of the Angels. He's supported by the Maple Hill Congregation in Lebanon. He and his wife, Erica, they have a son, Andre, Andres. I don't know how old this girl is, but uh, the, the family had not been real faithful, and they have gotten back very much faithful. And it was surprising to them. Uh, we built this house. They had an old house, and they had another little house that they had built out of block, and we built an area right between those two. And it was going to be the bedroom. And they, they had electricity to their house, but they didn't have a breaker box. It was just wired straight in. And so Jamie Rosier was with us. And, of course, everybody knows Jamie, works for FPU. Jamie goes down and pulls the meter at the highway. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of trouble we'd have gotten into, but we didn't. He broke the seal, up and turned the power off. We put in a box, a breaker panel, and plugged it back in. And, of course, he, had, he hadn't been back. <laughs> but uh, it was very encouraging to me to see this young lady being baptized and for this family to be uh, back into uh, attendance with the congregation there in Valley of the Angels. This little lady here is Cecia, and that's Jacqueline, William's wife's sister. Uh, Jacqueline and Cecia's mother was killed in a motorcycle accident just a few years back. And so Cecia is probably about 14, 13 or 14. And she graduated, I think it was in either maybe January or maybe November, right toward the end of this year. Uh, did very well, top of her class there in Contaranas. I don't know where you go from there. Uh, but it's so funny because this is William's sister-in-law. And I make fun of him. I aggravate him. I say, how is it when you live in a house with your wife and her sister? So uh, but they're very sweet people and very good people. And her name is Cecia. They're from the northern part of Honduras, a place called Olanchito, which is uh, maybe uh, Catacamas. Predizan Clinic in Catacamas is probably an hour or so away. And if you've never been to Honduras, you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's in the northern part of Honduras toward the Gulf. It's not too far from the Gulf itself. And this is a picture there of the graduation. This is Cecia and, and Jacqueline. <clears throat> and Olancho is the province uh, where they're from. And back in November, William took a group of the leaders of the churches there in Contaranas and in Villa to Olancho for a uh, seminar, like on a Friday and a Saturday. And so it, it's, always been, it's always been puzzling to me because we work, you know what I'm saying? They work too, but it's not like they've got jobs like we got. We got to punch a clock and show up, and they're kind of a little bit more free. Most of them, some of them are even farmers, which is, is a good thing, but they were able to go up on Friday and Saturday and come back. It's probably about a four-hour drive there somewhere about. So uh, one of the things that we have tried to be very vocal about with William and, and push was leadership training. I explained to William last time we were there, William, we want this church to be here in Contaranas when William Cardona is not here or Ricky Pierce is not here. We want this church to be here and be established. And that's what we want for each congregation in Villa, uh, Cont uh, Contaranas, and Valley of the Angels. So that, and then I told him, so that we can move on to something else. We got involved in Honduras uh, through Bill and Suzanne Young about 1988, 1989. They went down to Honduras and worked a couple of times in the clinic there at uh, Baxter Institute. In 1991, you were there, was our first trip to Honduras. Was it an eye opener? Uh, my whole family went. And uh, I think it, it helps. I, I wish everybody had the opportunity to go. You might not ever want to go back, but it'll open your eyes and make you appreciate uh, what, what you do have here. But 
uh, we've worked through the clinic there in, 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 uh, at Baxter Institute downtown Tegucigalpa. And then we began to branch out into some other areas. And we went into the Valley of the Angels in, in 2004. Uh, 2005, the church building was completed. Uh, the, the Central Church of Christ in Sarasota, Florida, built the building, and they said, "If you got, we will build a building if you guys will furnish the preacher, and we've held up to our end of the deal, and they did too. So the building is still there. They still own it, but it, it's there, and the church is still there, and it's alive and well. Uh, it's, it's doing very good, in fact. Not probably about a month ago now, the young lady in the middle there, and this picture is not um, the most recent picture, but that's Tanya Rodriguez and her family. The little girl in the front, uh, not the one on the, will be on your left. Uh, they went into Tegucigalpa to take the COVID vaccine, and she had a reaction to it, and she died. And I think she's about five or six years old. And so doing what you think is right and ends up losing the child. And it's been a very difficult thing for her. Tanya, I have known Tanya since she was the size of the little girl that passed away, literally. Her mother and daddy are Yobani and Raina, and uh, not this Raina. And uh, they had 10 children, eight boys and two girls. And I was describing everything. Car uh, William notified me about the death. And he was describing everything, and I said, yeah, I know the mother, and I know the daddy, I know the girls, and I said, there's eight boys, two, I mean, eight girls, two boys, Oscar and Olvin, and he says, well, you know what, more about them than I do, and I said, well, yeah, I've been knowing them since they were this size. They've grown up, she's grown up in the church. She's a part of the church in the Valley of the Angels, and then once the church was established in Macualiso, which Macualiso is kind of like uh, from here to Kelso, out of Tegucigalpa. Very rural. We had a clinic there, what, uh, th two years, three years ago now, I guess. A uh, very rural area. Uh, when we were there, the first time I was there, they said we're going to hope to have electricity here in two years. They do have electricity now. Uh, and, and there's been some folks that have expressed a desire to assist this family financially. And uh, I know a couple of people have already done that. And if there's something that you'd like to be involved with, whatever, uh, we can do that. And uh, I, I've asked Donna to just take the money into the Honduras ministry, and then we will make sure that the funds gets to her. What we have done in the past, we helped a family, the Pavone family. I don't know if you all remember a fellow by the name of Ishmael Pavone that passed away like in December a couple of years back. Uh, we helped that family some, and William kept, excuse me, Raina, Hondurans are notorious about spending money. <laughs> they're not good, well, they're, they're not, they don't know what a budget is. So what William does is William keeps the money for folks like that, and then periodically he will give, give them funds for the family. I know that sounds terrible, but. Uh, if you if you give them a lot of money at one whack, it's it's not going to last very long. So, if you'd like to do that, feel you're more than welcome to do it, and we'll make sure that it gets passed along to her. This is last July we were there. This is Macualiso. This is the church there in Macualiso. Tanya is on the far left, and then Jacqueline Williams Williams' wife and Cecilia's sister-in-law, and then Maria. Uh, who is a member of it's uh, June Simmons in Honduras? She looks just like June. I'm sorry, and uh, and they were they met us there and had a welcome sign and whatever. And so this is the latest picture that I have of her, and then this was from 2017. I told you I knew the family. Uh, this is not all of them, of course, but that's Tanya holding the little girl. Uh, I think that's right, and. Uh, I was fortunate enough that day to be able to baptize two of these girls and their cousin. And so that was the purpose in this photo. This is the family. Uh, Yobani is the guy with the red shirt on, and then his wife is, well, it was his wife. I think they're estranged now. I don't know exactly the situation there. But uh, anyway, that's the family, and I know them very well. 
this is Eunice. This is the little girl. Uh, Amy Clark knows a little bit more about this situation than I do. Amy fell in love with Honduras just like I have, and she keeps up with a lot more stuff going on down there than I, I really know. I, I talk to William every week, but a lot of the other folks I don't get the chance to. And so Amy Clark keeps up with them and uh, keeps me abreast of in fact, I notified her about uh, Eunice passing away. She says that Yakelin had already uh, messaged her and told her. And this is the funeral. Uh, she passed away on Sunday, and they buried her on Monday. Uh, William was at uh, in in uh, via the San Francisco, which by the road is probably 45 minutes to an hour away from Macaliso, where Tanya lives. And so he told me, he said, as soon as I get through here, I'm going to go be with the family. And he did, and they ended up having to go to Tegucigalpa to pick up the body from the hospital. And uh, at 5 o'clock on Monday morning, they were able to get the little girl's body. Uh, we were able to help them with the, the funeral expenses. And uh, so th this is this is a few pictures. That's William in the middle there with a kind of a plaid-looking blue plaid shirt. Uh, and Tanya, I think, is holding the little child there in her arms. And this is just a continuation of the funeral service. There is a, a graveyard in the middle of the Valley of the Angels. Uh, we see it every time we go. Just about it's next to the parking area where we park, public parking. So there was a lot of folks there, obviously, for a lot of reasons. And this is Tanya's son. I, you can't see him too well in that picture, but he's with William. And William let me know last week, I think it was last week, that he invited Tanya and, and her children to come and stay with them in Contaranas for a couple of days. Just let them stay with them, and they would uh, maybe get their mind off of the situation there. So... This is William and the little boy here. I think it was on the Saturday of Father's Day, actually, uh, that this photo may have been taken. And they had a meal for them, and Tanya's the one's got her back to us there in the gold her yellow shirt. This is some of her sisters, her mothers on the on the, your right, and then Cecilia's on the left, and then some other of the children there at the table. And that's on, that's where the church meets there in, in Contaranas. These, uh, these gentlemen here on the far right is Oscar Rodas, R-O-D-A-S. I'm assuming that's the way you pronounce it. All I know is Oscar. He's a good guy. I have known him now since ever since we got involved in the work in Contaranas, and I always wondered what kind of work he did. Well, he's an electrician, and he is a mason, block, block brick mason. And I thought, well, how in the world can you work and earn a living and be at the church as much as you're at the church? Well, he does. And this particular day, Joe and I had taken, <laughs> William told us, he said, we're going to take a little walk. And an hour and a half later, we're still walking. Right, Joe? And I thought I, thought I was going to die, I'll be honest with you. I thought, this is it right here on the side of the road in Honduras. I'm going to die. And there's four brothers. William's the guy standing there with his hands on his hip. And there's four brothers there, and this is their, their farm. I have no earthly idea how many acres. It's not acres down there. It's hectares down there. I don't know how much they own, but they're, they, have, they are all members of the church there in Contaranas. And not only they're members, they're very active in the leadership part of the church there. <clears throat> and this day, we had walked up to that house. And of course, that means you got to walk back. There's no road, uh, and so you you get up there, and they've got this. There's uh, there's as many people up, uh, probably forty people sitting there waiting on us to get there. I felt bad because I had stopped two or three times, but we got there, had a devotional, and then we had a meal right up at the end, end of this big mountain at the end of the valley there, and it was. Pretty surreal. Uh, so this guy on the right is Oscar, and I was going to tell you this story about Oscar. So now William uh, contacted me last week, and he said, I got something I want to see what you think. And he said, the churches in Contaranas and Villa de San Francisco have decided 
out of the contribution to help Oscar some with when because he works with the churches so much. And I told him, I said, I think that's absolutely great. So right now the churches are. I don't have. I have no idea how much they're they're paying, but on the weekends they help him financially, and I think that's. A, that's a really good thing. And that speaks, I think, tremendously that the congregations feel well enough about him to be able to want to help him financially. All right. As, a, as I kind of emphasized, uh, the, the focus that we've had ever since William really came in is to continue leadership training. And he is very diligent about that. I was speaking to him yesterday for a pretty long time and it was like 4 o'clock. And he said, Brother, I'm supposed to be in, I'm, I got a uh, leadership training class in Valley of the Angels at 4 o'clock. I said, William, you're late. He said, yes, sir, I'm late. <laughs> but he, I mean, no, wait, it was 3 o'clock their time. It was 4 my time, and it was 3 o'clock their time. So he says, I'm late. But I'm thinking, how many people go to leadership training at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And when Jim preached his sermon this morning, that made me think a whole lot about where I am and, and, and what I think about how I'm dedicated, uh, you know, to think, would I go at 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon to leadership training? So the brother is Oscar David Rodas, and he's being supported by the churches both in Contaranas and Villa de San Francisco. Both, all three churches, even Macaliso, are continued. One of the things that Tanya did, she was the Sunday school teacher. And so that has been a, a blow. Maybe that's helped her some, I don't know. Uh, but she was very diligent. She's always been very faithful. And so uh, I, I, I wanted to really support them as much as possible, that family. Uh, everything is really... Uh, going well. I, t I t keep telling William, I said, understand that if things are going well, sooner or later something's going to happen because Satan's not going to like it. So be prepared for it. But it uh, seems, seems like everything is going well. As I said, we've had 23 baptisms. I asked him to give me an update uh, just the other day. Uh, since we were there in July of last year, there's regular Bible training for the teens, which I think is significant in Contaranas each Sunday. We've been in Honduras for well, 31 years this year, Lord willing, if we get to go. And I believe that the strength of the church is going to be in the children that learned what they've learned and were devoted, were baptized and became Christians when we started this. And I think that's going, that's what the, that's going to cause the church to, to maintain a very big prevalent Catholicism, and so there, there, every every vehicle that I see in Honduras has got God or Jesus Christ or something on it. Every bus, most of them, uh, and and so this is a this is a country that is very familiar with God, and I think familiar with Jesus Christ. And so we could open the discussion and have evangelism. Fairly easily, uh, a lot easier than it is here. I would su I would suspect. I know it is. So, what's the plans for this July? Well, every one of the things that Suzanne taught me many, many, many years ago was the key word in any Honduras brigade is flexibility, because once you get on the ground, everything changes. But. The plans are now, we built a classroom at the bit, the building there in Valley of the Angels, and it is a wooden structure. William says, we can paint it, we just can't afford the paint. And so I said, okay, we'll try to paint the outside of the classroom. He says, another thing that we'd like to do is build swing sets for the congregation. I said, William, I've got swing set kits in my garage that I've had for about 10 years to carry to Honduras, and I never have. And I said, you have made me very happy. They, we now can purchase pressure-treated wood. Uh, before, it was just green sawed pine, uh, termites, the fodder for termites, if you know what I'm talking about. 
but now it's pressure treated, and so I think we can do that. I think we can do that now. We're going to see how that's going to be work out. Uh, we continue. I know one thing that Ray has done very much uh, since he's been in and out of Honduras is building more pews for the churches there, specifically in Cantaranas and Villa. Uh, he's got a pattern on that, and I think he may have even have a, a patent applied for. Uh, he holds classes pretty regularly. Uh, so that's that's what we have planned. Right now we have <clears throat> seven, I think, that are, well, maybe six definites, seven maybe, one, one more maybe, and then one thinking about it. So our group is going to be limited. So that means that some of the things that we've done in the past, such as medical and whatever, I, don't, I just don't know if we'll have the people to be able to do that. But I'm, I'm very much planning on trying to do uh, food bags, uh, vacation Bible school. You can't go to Honduras. If Amy Osteen and Amy Clark go, you're going to do vacation Bible school. And if you've never experienced that, you need to go just to experience that. Every child in Honduras knows the cat's, the, uh, Amy Osteen's cat's name and her dog too. Uh, so she talks to them constantly. Food bag distribution is planned. I'm not certain about medical clinics. I will just have to see how that goes. Uh, so if you got seven or eight people going, that limits the number of extra bags of supplies that we can take. I know this morning uh, Marquita was asking about toothbrushes and toothpaste. I definitely want to try to take a suitcase full of that. Uh, that goes really well. That's something that could be handed out. I don't know if we'll be able to do, like I say, the full medical clinics and dental. Or, I just don't know. Uh, we'll have to see a little bit more flexibility. <clears throat> Normally, our our date with our dates that we had registered with uh, American Ambassadors for Christ (AFC) was July seventh through the fourteenth. That's Thursday to Thursday. <clears throat> and so I've been checking ticket prices about every week. I can tell you what day of the week they're the cheapest. Uh, and so uh, the day that we were supposed to fly, all of a sudden there's no tickets available. So I'm assuming that there's probably a group going down that day uh, that's got tickets ahead of us. So we may have to move our date one way or the other. I think there will be enough flexibility there <clears throat> in at AFC to get that done. Uh, AFC has got a brand new Ambassadors for Christ, which is uh, sponsored by the Smyrna Church of Christ, has a facility that they just completed about a year ago now, I guess, and it's excellent. It is perfect. I don't know exactly how many people that can room there, but there's a, a couple of rooms that are dorm-type rooms. There's individual rooms like husband, wife, child. Uh, there's a kitchen. There's all the conveniences of home. Uh, we'll probably, uh, before we'd, we'd stay at a hotel, Excelsior, which was has worked out great. But this now we'll be staying there. It's a little better location, really, as far as traffic is concerned. And we hopefully we can get known Suarez to be our cook, and he is a chef. So if that brings you want to get on board, uh, Hopefully, we can cook our meals there at the clinic. That'll save some time, uh, especially in the evenings. Uh, so the plans are out. I just need about 15 people to decide they want to go. Uh, this year is going to be a little less challenging, by the way. We're going to fly into a new airport. Only problem is it's an hour and a half away from where we need to be, about like from here to Nashville. So uh, we'll, it's, a, it's a perfect place. Uh, K. Brewer's son was stationed there at the Air Force. It is the military base at Canto Sano, or Canto Sano, yeah. Uh, and it's now Pomerola Air Base, or International Airport now. So uh, the plans are all laid out. Uh, the things are going well. The churches are going well. Just like any small congregations, though, you're going to have difficulties from time to time. But uh, I, I think the Lord, is, God has been blessed, and, and in turn, he has, has blessed us, especially in this ministry. We tried to be extremely frugal 
in anything that we do. We try to account for every penny that's spent. I want you to know if you contribute to this ministry, it goes to that ministry somehow, some way. Uh, we try to spend the money as wisely as possible. Uh, I, and I, never, I occasionally I'll ask for questions, but and I don't know if I can answer them, but if you got a question, uh, at, well, the trip this year, Lord willing, depending on airline tickets, about $900, which that's about $400 cheaper than it's been being. And so that's that's a lot better. Uh, we're staying at the AFCs is a lot cheaper. Uh, we'll be able to save some costs there, but there are some little bit increased fuel costs for having to travel from the airport, <clears throat> et cetera. Uh, and also there's a little bit of cost in order to fly back into the United States, you have to have a negative COVID test to get back into, to even get on the airplane, quite honestly, to get back into the States, unless that changes between now and July, which I don't see that happening. Uh, if you got a CDC vaccination, they'll accept that in Honduras. You don't have to have anything going down. If you do not, you'll have to have a negative COVID test within three days, 72 hours, to go back. Is that right, Ray? Nothing's changed. So uh, that kind of restricts it a little bit. Does anybody have any questions? All right. I, I know I didn't do that good job. One of the things that we always do when we're there in Honduras, well, we get to visit churches at three different locations on the same Sunday. But we always provide the opportunity for someone, to, if they've made a decision they want to be baptized, to be baptized. Uh, and, and we want to do that tonight. There's a reason why we go to Honduras. We want people to become saved. We want them to be brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't speak much Spanish. They can't speak much English. But we're still brothers and sisters. Our skin color may be a little different, but we're still brothers and sisters. And if I read my scripture properly, that's exactly what the scripture talks about what Jim was talking about this morning. We, we have a response. In fact, I think, to be quite honestly with you, we, you and I have only one job as a Christian, and that's to take somebody else with us, to be with Jesus Christ. That's our responsibility. And uh, sometimes it's easy to share that. Sometimes it's not. When I go to Honduras, it's easy for me to share that. Maybe not so easy here. Uh, and I, it's kind of like, when you go to church camp, you can do it there really well in church camp. When you come back home, things are a little tighter. Uh, but we need to get in that spirit. We need to have that spirit. We need to be willing to share. Pray to God, give me the opportunity to meet someone today, to influence them, and then prepare, be prepared when he gives you that opportunity. Any other questions, comments? All right, we're going to sing the... Uh, Invitation song Ben's got provided for us, and if you'd like to, if you got just want us to pray, elders will be be more than glad to pray with you for anything uh, situation. I, I believe thoroughly in the power of prayer. It is the ability for you and I to speak directly to God, even though He can read our minds. Thank you for listening, and we pray now that uh, if you have a need in any way, that we'll stand and we'll sing this invitation. Oh,
opportunity to take the Lord's Supper this morning. If you go out of the room from my left, your right, uh, there will be someone there to assist you. Once again, uh, we'll sing the first verse of number 476, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. Each truth in God's word he has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for allowing us to be here tonight, for keeping us safe throughout this day. We pray now that as we come to the close of this day that you will continue to pour your blessings down upon us. We pray that you will be with each and every one of us, our families, in this week to come, that you will give us all safety, that you will keep our minds firmly thinking about you and all the things that we can do uh, for the people that, that are around us each and every day. We thank you so much for Ricky and for the message that was brought tonight, the things that are happening in Honduras, all the things that are happening there in your name. We just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be able to reach out and in whatever way, whether it be monetarily or through prayer. We just thank you so much for this ministry and that it's always been such a big part of this church. We're mindful, Father, of the families that have suffered from the loss of a loved one this past week. We pray that you will reach down your hand of comfort and, and put it on them. We also are mindful of ones that are sick. We pray that you will help to heal them. We thank you for the uh, new baby that was born this past week, and we just pray that you will bless them and uh, that the baby and the family. And we just thank you so much for that. We pray now, Father, that as we leave, that you will watch over us and that you will care for us and that you will make it possible for us to come at the next appointed time. In Christ's name.